The first thing I'm going to do is show you how to start up WinRAD with uh, the LD1 software so that there, there is uh, no problem. And then I'll show you a few little pitfalls, things that may be causing the problems that you've been having and how to avoid them. Um, <clears throat> I'm using an LD1B, uh, but the procedure is the same for your LD1A. The only difference is that uh, the LD1B has a power switch and when I tell you to turn the power off and turn it back on or just to turn it back on what you'll have to do is plug the power cable in for on pull it out for off since you don't have a switch so right now the power is off and I have not launched WinRAD yet I'm assuming that you follow the installation procedure so the uh, right DLLs got installed in the WinRAD folder uh, and first thing I'll do is turn power on to the receiver so you would be plugging in your power cable and you should uh, if your speaker is active you should hear the little windows sound that indicates that there is a USB device that just connected uh, now I'll launch WinRAD and you should see this little select device dialog uh, if you've done something wrong if the power isn't on or if it wasn't shut down properly you'll see a different one that I'll show you a little later click OK to dismiss it and then WinRAD comes up uh, if you haven't already done so go to the select input menu uh, under show options and select LD1 as the input and then you can dismiss that. Then you have to select your sound card for both input and output. This is the sound card I'm using for input. It's an EMU 0202. You probably have something different. Select uh, the line here that corresponds to the connector on your sound card that you've plugged the receiver into. And then select whatever is appropriate for the output, speakers or headphones or whatever click OK to dismiss it. Select the sample rate. This you have to set the sample rate for your sound card separately. WinRAD doesn't set it. You have to then select the sample rate that your sound card is set for from this drop-down menu. Uh, my sound card is set for 192 kilohertz. Yours is probably 96 or 48. Select whichever one you're using. Uh, and you probably don't have, have to do anything with the output sample rate. Click close to dismiss it. Um, and then you should be able to click start and have it start. Now if you click on the LO button up here, that shows you the local oscillator frequency. That will be the frequency in the middle of the display and it always, well not all, normally it starts up at this point unless you've got something stored in memory. This is the tune frequency. That's the center of the tuning bandwidth here. Uh, so let's see we don't want the LO frequency to be 9.15 megahertz so I'm gonna bring up the lazy dog dialog the little control panel so we can set that um, click anywhere in WinRAD just to make sure it's got keyboard focus and then press on your keyboard the H as in hotel key twice and the lazy dog control panel will, will appear and then you can move it around as you wish. Uh, I'm going to move the course slider over one notch and then always make sure the last thing you do here is click on the fine slider after you after you move the course slider in other words at least click on the fine slider. Here is the LO frequency that it's just been set to and it's updated the display on WinRAD and I'll click in WinRAD, that'll get rid of the, uh, the Lazy Dog menu now. This station is on 1190 kilohertz, and you can see that it's offset below the center frequency, which would be right here. It's, in other words, I'm receiving the wrong side of the LO frequency. There are two things you can do about that. 
One is to go to Show Options and Swap I and Q Channels. That just reverses the meaning of the left and right channels in your sound card. Or, and this is kind of unique to the Lazy Dog, bring it up, go to the LO Phase drop-down menu. Notice it's set to 90 degrees. If you set it to minus 90 degrees, it has the same effect as Swap IQ Channels. So now that station that's on 1190 kilohertz shows up on 1190 kilohertz. Okay, uh, I don't think you can hear it on this video, but it's there. You can certainly see the carrier. Now I'm going to bring up the Lazy Dog menu again and move the course slider up right here. Um, now the LO frequency is 14.063 megahertz or let's see it hasn't updated it here yet because I haven't clicked on the find slider. Okay it's actually 146 a uh, 14.0625 it rounded it up here to 14.063 but I want to try and tune in WWV on 15 megahertz so I'll move the fine slider up here and I may have a little glitch in the software I had to click on the on the slider again to get the LO frequency to update now it's 15. Point 014.64 megahertz rounded up to 15.015 and the tuning frequency right now is 15.032 but if I drag it down now it's right on WWV here's the tuning frequency currently um, so that's those are the basics of how to set up and use it now here's one of the one of the causes of a problem I think you might be having where you're getting those error screens when you start up WinRAD. I'm going to turn off power to the uh, Lazy Dog receiver and the signals go away. Now if I turn it back on it looks completely different. And if I bring up the Lazy Dog control panel it has absolutely no effect that's because it hasn't been able to reconnect so I'm going to give up on this in despair exit out of WinRAD and then restart WinRAD and you've probably seen this so I'll click OK on both of those to bring up and unfortunately it goes ahead and brings up WinRAD but you're not going to be able to start it properly. So click on exit again to get out of it. Then turn the power off to the receiver and turn it back on before you uh, start WinRAD. Launch WinRAD. Now you see the select device menu as usual. Click start and everything's okay. Now it's started up back at 9 kilohertz for the LO frequency, so all you have to do is put the LO frequency back where you wanted it. And there once again is WWV. And if you want to drop down to the 20 meter ham band, there might be some interesting stuff down there. I have to retune my antenna though. Now let's see. There, that's better. Yep, sure enough. that single sideband station. That's probably a DX station. Unfortunately it's right on the hump in the center 
which is generated by the sound card. So I'm going to move up one notch and see if I can hear them any better. I guess, uh, you can't hear them anyway. Not a terribly strong signal. Here's a stronger one. That's a very nice SSB signal right there. And here's another DX SSB station. Okay, so um, 